please do. Morning to you, Kirti Gajain. Sit down. Kirtika, you are from Jaipur, you have done uh, Vijay Karnas in civil, and you have uh, uh, taken anthropology. Yes, sir. And you studied at IIT in Bhubaneswar. Now, I think uh, it is uh, a legitimate question arising out of your uh, diverse background. You grew up in Rajasthan and you studied in Orissa. How are the two societies different from an anthropological viewpoint? Uh, both these states are very big and diverse in their own terms. And uh, most importantly, Rajasthan has a folk culture which is very localized. So every place of Rajasthan has a different sort of culture. Odisha has more of a classical culture. We say dances also. In Rajasthan, we have more of folk dances. On Odisha, we have Odissi, which is a classical dance. Same goes with language. We have Rajasthani with so many dialects. And Odisha, we have Odissi, which is a, again a classical language. There are no dialects in Odisha? Dialects are there, but the language is a classical language, whereas Rajasthani is a regional language. What is the difference? Classical language has a history of coming from one language and having little bit of less diversity. Rajasthani is very diverse. You move 10 kilometers and the language or the dialect changes. Odissi, more or less Odi actually. It remains same. Any other difference? Uh, uh, lifestyle is different in both these states. Rajasthan's lifestyle is more fast-paced and Odisha people have more inclination towards spirituality also. This is evident from the number of temples we have in Odisha. Rajasthan's culture has been more royal and there are forts, palaces. In Odisha people have been more spiritual and mentally calm. When you speak on these uh, specific tenets, and you're speaking as an anthropologist or as a tourist? Uh, as a student, actually. Student who has lived in Odessa and yes. who has lived in Odessa. And who studied anthropology. Uh, so and the, my, my question was quite specific. As an anthropologist, do you, do you see any societal differences? I couldn't observe that much. All right. Uh, as a civil engineer, I'd be interested in your views on uh, construction industry in India currently. What are the what are its achievements? What are the gains? So, India is a growing nation, and infrastructure is one of the backbone for Indian economy. Mm -hmm. And construction sector is holds the nerve of the infrastructure sector. So we have projects like Setu Bharatam and construction of national highways, then RCS, the Udan scheme. So all these need a lot of material from industries such as cement, steel, aggregates. So I think the construction sector holds a lot of importance in the development of the nation. Why is it in doldrums? Probably because of the lack of availability of raw materials. We import steel, for example, from China. In fact, we are exporting net. We are net exporter last year. Well, then I'm sorry, sir. Chinese steel is subject to anti-dumping duties. Right. Can you tell me more about the duties? So, we have custom duty. Mm -hmm which is made on goods which are imported from abroad. Then we have stamp duty, which is imposed on the goods which are manufactured in the country. Stamp duty? Oh, sorry, excise duty. Okay. So excise duty has been abolished? Uh, after the GST, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, a 
among your hobbies, uh, you cite badminton, swimming, dramatist, dramatics, and you had your best thesis of uh, IIT and BTEC. What was the thesis on? Sir, it was a project to understand the underwater scoring for a fully submerged structure. So, uh, what happens when there is a structure made in, uh, in water, say like bridges, so with the flow of water, the bed tends to erode, which leads to the weakening of the foundation. So, my thesis was oriented to devise a formula for a structure which is fully submerged in a water, and we can understand how, at, with respect to time how much the bed will erode. Okay. Does it have utility in uh, practical terms, designing the bridges? Uh, designing bridges. No, meaning. Does it have utility for, you know, making the structure more stable and lasting? Yes, sir, it does have because first thing it will cut economical cost, mm -hmm. second thing it will ensure the safety. Now that we are moving towards a lot of underwater, like say, underwater pipelines to transport gas, we need structures which are stable for a longer term. If if we do not design them, either will be not will not be economically pragmatic, or else the structure will fail, which will lead to the loss of all the project. Thank you. Please. You started in IIT. Yes. Uh, which was the first IIT which was set up? Uh, so first IIT was set up in West Bengal, IIT Kharagpur. Hmm. You are now looking for a career in the civil services. Uh, can you tell me what is the concept of uh, All India Civil Services? All India Services. Sir, so, All India Services were devised to act as a uniform service which can implement... No, let's start at the beginning. How many All India Services are there? Sir, so, three All India Services are there. Mm -hmm. Namely? Uh, the Indian Administrative Services, the Indian Revenue Services, and the Indian uh, Police Services. Okay, you got one wrong, but anyway, we'll continue. So continue, what is the concept? Uh, it was to uh, increase coordination between center and state and to have a uniform policy implementation across the nation and it was devised in such a manner that regional specialities will also be taken into care while implementing schemes or uh, policies which are devised by the centre. Okay, how many national parks are there in the country? Mm, I'm sorry sir, I'm not aware of the number. Uh, you are fond of badminton, can you tell me who is the first Indian player, male or female, to win the All England Badminton Championships? Uh, sir, it's Prakash Padukone. Uh, he won the All India, All England Open Series. And uh, in terms of international titles won, how many has uh, Saina Nehwal won in the course of her career so far? Sir, I'm not aware of the exact number, but she was the first woman to get an Olympics medal for the country, and she has been world number Are you sure? Uh, let's, she was the first athlete, female athlete to get a medal for the country? Is, uh, is that what you're saying? In Olympics, yes. In Olympics. First female athlete? Pregnant mm -hmm. athlete? Mm -hmm. yes. Athlete as a, in a broader sense. First female it's athlete. Nee, it, you can use it in a broader mm -hmm. broader sense. Yes, sir. Things. The first female athlete to win a medal in the Olympics for India was Karnam Malishwari, in weightlifting. Mm, I'll read more on that. Please. Uh, you have studied in Orissa. Yes. Sir. And we say very rich in uh, minerals and forest. And a lot of big industries, mining industries, especially they are coming in Parisa and establishing the mining industries. And there is a uh, there is a always a news that it is usurping the rights of tribal people 
they are taking over the lands, their livelihood is being compromised. So as an anthropologist, how do you see this conflict? So this is the classic problem of sustainable development versus conservation of tribal culture. Odisha is very rich in minerals, resources and forest areas, but at the same time it holds the largest tribal population of the country. So more often than not there is a conflict between whether we should be protecting tribal land or we should be focusing on development of the state. As an anthrop anthropologist I would I feel that there should be a balance between the two and uh, exploitation of the resources or should be done in a sustainable manner and tribals should not be impacted. Because for them land is just more than a place to live. It forms a way of life. So they have a concept of sacred complex and then nature and spirit complex. So if you take away their land, you are not just taking away a piece of land. You are taking away their right to live. So I feel that we should restrict our development to the areas which do not have major tribal population. And even if you are moving to tribal areas, we should have their consent and we should focus on proper and heartful rehabilitation. What is inflation? Uh, so inflation is the rise in price with respect to the price a few years back or say a base price. So say a commodity is now for rupees 100, if two, three years down the line it turns to become for rupees 120, then that 20 rupees is the inflation. So, inflation is absolute or money percentage? It is a percentage. So, have you heard the word, uh, the term WPI and CPI? Um, yes, sir. What is the difference between these two? So, uh, WPI is Wholesale Producers Index and CPI is Consumers Product. Producing index. Uh, WPI is the cost incurred by the seller and the products which we uh, use, the price of the products which we use for calculating WPI is the price incurred by the manufacturers. In CPI, we take into the account the cost incurred by the consumer. Uh, you are from Karoli? Oh. My father is from Karoli. You are from Bharatpur. I am from Jaipur. Oh, you are from Jaipur. So tell me the significance of Jaipur. Uh, so Jaipur is fondly known as the pink city. Um, it was the first planned city of the modern India. It has a lot of diversity for tourists and it is becoming the new tourist host hotspot in Rajasthan. So it has cultural heritage, like we have a lot of forts. Then there's a lot of scenic beauty also, which is there in Jaipur. And economy is majorly driven by the service sector. Kritika, um, you'd like to share your own assessment with you? Uh, At the onset, I'd like to congratulate you. You've done pretty well. And this uh, articulate. You come out as a sincere person. Uh, and uh, you have good command of language, and delivery, grammar, etc. Those are not the issues. The issues are something else. First and foremost, you would have to dispel the impression mm -hmm. that you are a first time person. Mm -hmm. The people who have been here on, uh, as if on long semanticals. Mm -hmm. So the board would be more used to older and uh, more experienced people. So you need to, first of all, assert that you are as good as them. You have the, uh, your brilliance or competence to overcome the age-related issues, okay? Now, 
for that purpose, one would like to recommend certain things to start with. Presentationally, I think you need to address your, yes. beyond your age. So perhaps the sari would be more, uh, more desirable. Hair would need to be put in a way that you look more formal. One doesn't want to go into it because it becomes a bit personal for men when you prescribe suits and all those things. So, so you, 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 you purposefully act a bit older than you are. Okay. okay? Youth, youthful exuberance needs to be sort of controlled. Saying like, like, like two or three times in a, in a reply is uh, a cliche in uh, your generation, but uh, yes. the generation that both belongs to, for them it may be a norm. So the language has to be more formal as well, as a part of this strategy. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think your domain knowledge is occasionally weak. Okay. You need to listen more intently. Mm -hmm. and you, you talked about differences between Rajasthan and Orissa, mm -hmm. which was the first question, curtain raiser, mm -hmm. which would give impression or which would uh, set the, the course. Uh, you got it yes. slightly off. Right. The question was, I thought it was pretty clear. Right. As an anthropologist, how do you see the mm -hmm. societal differences between Rajasthan and uh, Orissa? And uh, going there about temples and uh, folk dances and uh, folklore and all that was, was not what served the purpose. To give, give you your, your career a new direction, right? Uh, civil engineering, again, you were off the steel part. The biggest push, you didn't touch real estate altogether which is a big uh, sort of part of the crisis, mm. RERA and what have you. Right. We could have uh, sort of done much mm. better on that score. Okay. Mm. And uh, on other media sports, mm. my colleague asked you about mm. badminton, and you got it wrong. Uh, first medalist, you either, if you're not sure, you didn't have to risk it. She was the first medalist in badminton. Okay. I think so. So, so uh, don't venture into areas that you're not sure of. You mm. could have very well avoided that statement and mm. uh, would have been none the worse for it. So the, the lesson to be drawn is act slightly older than your age, mm. more mature. Uh, and uh, one would like to you to speak formally, okay. maintain eye contact with mm. everyone, mm. and uh, I think try and reassure them that uh, you have what it takes, despite being younger, despite it being the first attempt, and listen to the questions. Uh, generation may be accused of being impatient, you know, all these old foggies uh, who have nothing else to say. We, I know what they mean, etc. Now I don't they take them seriously. But you have to take them seriously too. And there is limited time at your disposal to impress them. The board is going to have you for, at the most for half an hour. If you invest too much of your time and replying in a long-winded, uh, unstructured manner as you did. Okay. Um, you are wrongly investing the time in, uh, uh, in boosting your career. So if you don't have the reply, you're not sure, don't get into it. You can say, I would let it pass. Uh, mm -hmm and so on. So that you get, you are asked some other question on which hopefully you would have, you will be better prepared. Okay? Right. 
so critical as the chairman said you have to make this work for you you know the fact that you're it's your first time there are people here who are giving it for the 11th time so you know the board would be i think a little fed up of people who are of that vintage so you have to now make your youth work for you rather than against you okay, okay. so for that to happen i guess what you need to do is listen carefully be precise in your answers and make sure there are no bloomers okay. so you know you made a bloomer for instance with the all india services right. it's it's uh, ias ips and forest service there are three of them uh, you went into revenue and that would give again the impression that uh, you have not started the fundamentals and this is something which i tell all the all the aspirants that you still have time right sit down take some 50 pages of a notebook like this think of various kind of subjects which are likely to make it top of the mind things like swachh bharat abhiyan you know there's a whole range uh, skill development and all which are very much current and make just short notes bullet points so you have that covered do a little more research on civil services because they, that could be a factor you know there could be questions around this that you have a technical background why do you want to go to the civil services and things like that think it over okay. have have answers ready mm-hmm. and uh, i think the post mortem god people sir or madam oh, formal approach as i said okay or uh, they're nodding your head and uh, mm-hmm. fine no uh, those, those are the kind of things which tend to make sure, it more it informal was. sure yeah. even that Yeah. So, okay. so, so you, you you need to be slightly more formal. It may not matter here, but it will certainly matter there. Yes. Mm-hmm. What I feel that <coughs> your replies were a little lengthy, okay. and you know, dragging sometimes your answers. Mm-hmm. So it has to be very short, precise, and to the point. Mm-hmm. So that kind of thing. I felt also that your basic economic concepts were also. Uh, uh, we have to work on that. For example, we were uh, talking about stamp duty. Stamp duty is entirely different. Thing. Plus, concept of inflation is also always in percentage terms, not in absolute terms. In fact, it was double the parties when when contradicted in stamp duty. She said central excise, and then contradicted again GST. Finally, so the basic concept of economics we have to grasp. Also, be familiar with the current affairs, the government plans and schemes. Mm-hmm. Would you try sitting back to the back of the chair, go further down? Okay. Yeah. You know, that that gives you better posture. Okay. Okay. Slouching. Okay. And uh, yes. yeah. take some posture. So, mm-hmm. and uh, try not replying immediately. Okay. Mm-hmm. Five ten seconds. Allow your subconscious mind to work on prioritization, structuring the reply. That happens automatically. You don't have to turn on and off any switch, uh, and then start replying. So bursting out reply uh, right after you have heard the question uh, risks being partially understood or misunderstood. that is bane of certain trend, certain replies that you did okay any questions any issues you may have just thing only like i have been told that i come across as an informal person so i'll take care of these things now okay. go with a positive mindset mm-hmm. okay you already you already have a technical degree with you so I think I think uh, in a good space. Nobody is asking you to be on defensive about your lack of experience or uh, informality, etc. It has its own uh, virtues, but nobody is asking you to suppress your youthful exuberance or whatever. Uh, but at the same time, 
it ha it should not land you on a slippery slope. And if you land up on slippery slope repeatedly, it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. You'd have to be much older to before you get into reserves. So, so uh, just just take care of that charge. Okay. okay. All the best. Thank you, sir.